Bonjour mm-hmm. to the Venusians and Martians watching this episode. Uh, I'm your host Mademoiselle Venus um, and I'm here to talk about fixations. In part 1 of this lecture I went over eight personality types and discussed their fixations and what do I mean by fixations? It's the thought that each of the personality types are stuck on the most, right? Uh sure life feeds us countless worries around our future, our finances, um our love lives, right? Um and there is a common theme. Uh we all pretty much think the same thoughts, right? But this is about that one thought uh that we um can't unpeel ourselves from okay we're caged uh this is how we think or uh this is the blueprint of our mind uh basically this single thought okay so it's what our attention goes to the most uh where we feed all of our um energy into this thought or feeling however you'd like to call it It is a thought that can get us moving, get us out of bed, and it is also a thought that can keep us stuck uh, in limbo. Okay. So for today's episode, I will be covering two personality types, ENTJs and ESTJs, and the reason why I decided to keep this short, shorter than the previous video is because it gets honestly confusing for me, right? Um packing all of this content into one lecture because I don't like looking at my notes um and reading them uh, simultaneously um I'd like I like to absorb whatever content um I have put together and then distill all of it in my head and uh, just do it in real time for you right to be honest with you it's been incredibly exhausting um and time consuming uh producing these lectures on fixations the reason is simple i mean there's a ton of research to be done um but it's just not that it's it's the fact that i don't want to parrot truths to you that are out there although i am for the most part i just want to make sure that the content that i'm producing is authentic right um it's something that i have observed to be true so i need to be go out there do my field work and see if theory matches practice and that's why it takes me time um and i am not any of this uh any of the 10 personality types that i have covered um thus far and so it takes time anywho So coming back to fixation so what do i mean right this is this is a thought that is simply on the surface it doesn't need any probing it's it's there it's echoing it's not voluntary you're not choosing to hone in on this one thought okay it, it is there it commands attention it demands attention um and so you must feed into it right it's 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 involuntary it's just there it's It's possible that when you were growing up um you sort of sought comfort in this thought okay or it gave you confidence somehow um to navigate this world if you could tackle this thought right um so back to ENTJs and ESTJs ENTJs and ESTJs are sexy and I know that I've said this about INTJs and INFJs but every personality type has is sexy right um in their own way so ENTJs and ESTJs are the doers they get shit done they get the job done do the other personality types not do this well they don't not in the way that an ENTJ or an ESTJ would and yes I'm fan of I'm fan girling right now and rightly so. They look at life as a series of jobs. It's really that simple. And Jung called it the an intellectual formula, right? He said that these types are the most objective and they have a formula for life and the formula is get the job done. So how do they get the job done? It's simple. They break things down. to steps okay that's all they do all the time that's their fixation 
you set a goal and then you break down the steps and then you follow it and then you check it on the list and then you call wins on each of uh, the tasks that you complete and then you go to bed the end and the sequel to that narrative that runs in their heads is you get up the next day and you do it all over again all right so this is the intellectual formula this is what makes entjs and estjs uh, some of the most objective uh, types amongst the 16 personality types right because this is a standard that they set for themselves get the job done be productive and this is the standard or the law um, that they want everybody else in the world to adhere to because it makes sense right uh, you are what you do doing is religion doing is their anthem doing is their motto doing is sacrosanct and this is the standard uh, that they hold themselves to and they want others to also adhere to the same standard right because you are what you do now as an infp all i can say is that you would benefit immensely if you were to just get to interact with entjs or estjs because then you start understanding how they work and how they get things done okay by this formula and you need to witness this formula because it is inspiring okay so you look at a task like let's say brushing your teeth okay it could be anything but let's just stick to this example for now and you can't think beyond it right uh somehow it just seems like an insurmountable task especially when you're having low energy and you're just having an off day like getting to work right um it is an off day you're having an off day and you don't want to go to work but you can still be productive and how can you do that it's by looking at all of the steps that you need to take in order to get to work right so if you were an ENTJ or an ESTJ, you would work backwards. You'd be like, okay, my goal is getting to work, right? That is the fixation because getting to work makes me productive. Um, it gives me, it brings me money. So what am I going to do um, just to feel productive, right? Uh, so the goal can, you can, you can kind of uh, change the objective from getting to work to being productive. And one of the ways you can be productive is getting out of bed, right? Um, so that would be step number one. Step number two would be walking yourself to the bathroom. Step number three would be locating your toothbrush. Step number four would be, and you know the drill, right? So as you get to these tasks, right, these mini tasks, these atomic tasks, and you keep them, keep checking them off, uh, off a list, uh, in your mind or maybe just pull pen and paper and write it all down you start feeling better uh, with every step that you're able to take and who knows by the end of uh, the drill you might as well feel motivated to get to work okay so uh, I'm saying all this because I just want you to understand the, the fixation um, or the way an ENTJ or an ESTJ mind works is breaking things down into lists to steps okay uh, sorry breaking things down into steps okay making a list fixing a timeline and following the schedule it's pretty straightforward it's neat it's clean cut there is no obfuscation and you just get done with these tasks one after the other after the other and you feel accomplished because you're able to do these things right doing is their formula it is their ideal right um, it is what they derive their value from and they go outward with it right they, they scope out what is being valued by the world by the majority of the people out there okay in in terms of qualification their educational qualification um, their status uh, how much financial power they have, for instance. And 
this becomes a part of the formula right this becomes their end goal um, seeking the status seeking this power um, and so they can be ruthless about it because this is what they want to accomplish so if there's any distractions they're going to cut those distractions off right because all of their actions must align with this formula the formula is everything right um and they could appear cunning um in in service to this formula and rightly so because the end justifies the means right uh that is the tenet that they live by and i'm not saying that that makes them unscrupulous i'm just saying that you should look at it from the objective of from the perspective of an entj or an estj which is getting the job done right that gives me value uh that gives me a place in this world and so i must adhere to this value often times they get a bad uh, reputation for being that drill sergeant right uh giving instructions to people uh because that's how they tend to think of um it in their own heads right like if 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 they need to get the job done what are the steps that's sort of their inner monologue that what that's what is happening they're giving these instructions to themselves and they're voicing these instructions to others so others can be as accomplished um as they are or help them accomplish the task together right if they're working in a team or with groups of people um i realized that i my description of entjs and estjs would give you the impression that they're very robotic very mechanical um and partly that is true uh, because how do you push through the world otherwise right Un- unless you get the job done right you have to uh, despite your emotions you need to get your job done and they are able to repress their emotional side um in service um to this formula right so now i want to give you some real life examples um i have an observed an entj or an estj uh, for a long duration of time to make a confident um observation about how they approach life but i do have an istj brother who is psychologically speaking very similar in the way he thinks to possibly an estj right um so i was going through this breakup this horrible breakup okay and i remember going to my brother and telling him that i was really struggling getting over him so he identified the problem and then he wanted to fix it right um as all martians do <laughs> so he broke it down to steps so the first step was he told me it's going to take you studies say that it takes a minimum of 3 months to get over someone so you'll have to struggle through that phase right three, for 3 months and then the second step was he said if you're feeling low energy you will have to get some blood work done right and figure out your vitamin d3 levels um make sure to get 8 hours of sleep uh, plenty of sunshine and drink at least you know eight glasses of water a day and that should take care of your low energy other than that just wait it out for 3 months and then you will be over uh, this individual so yeah it was very clean cut straight forward that was not the advice i was uh, hoping to get from him because i needed some emotional support but you get the drill right it's it's just how they work right another example would be let's say you want to be a book writer right um so an entj or an estj the way they think about it would be uh, so am i writing a short story or a novel and if it's a novel what's the minimum word count uh, that qualifies it as a full length novel okay so if it's 50000 words are a minimum so i'm going to make sure that i get at least uh, 500 words a day um for an hour and then in total it would take me by this formula in total it would take me about 3 months uh to accomplish this task to uh, get this book out right so that is the formula that is the fixation breaking things down into steps okay uh going by uh factual knowledge 
going out there into the world, figuring out um, what is it that the world values and how must I obtain this, okay, this value. Um, what do I need to do in order to accomplish my goals? What is my objective? What is my end goal? Uh, fixing things, moving through this chaos by having a goal in mind. So these are all their fixations. Again, I realize now that uh, when I was in part one of this um, lecture where I talked about ISTJs and um, ISFJs and how they can be routine oriented, it, it seems like making lists is again, it's sort of like a routine, right? So how do I make the distinction between an ISTJ slash ISFJ and ESTJ slash ENF, um, ENTJ is the fact that I know this sounds awful because I am being a behaviorist um, and I am stereotyping but there's some truth to stereotypes and behaviors and that is what I want to point out um, today okay or what I've been pointing out to in all of my videos so when you look at an ISTJ and an ISFJ um, they do things out of a need to feel comfortable um, they want to create familiarity that is their end goal um, not so much getting a job done but just kind of seeking comfort with familiarity okay and routines are definitely one way you can feel uh, that comfort when you start doing things that you do on a Monday uh, every Monday right um, it's just to feel comfortable but for an ENTJ and and ESTJ, it's not so much about feeling comfortable or um, seeking comfort through familiarity. It's it's more objective, right? It's about this needs to be done, this needs to happen. And so in, in my observation, um, ENTJs and ESTJs are more prepared for chaos. They welcome it. It's not so much that they welcome chaos, but they know that chaos is a part of life. And so they prepare themselves for it, okay, for unexpected events uh, that come up. So, for example, let's say um, you make a plan to go to a salon, to a hair salon, and you run into an acquaintance or a friend, okay. So that event, that event is unexpected. What also is a part of your plan is after you get done at the hair salon you have a party to go to so if you were an ISTJ or an ISFJ you would be super pissed that this friend showed up because he or she or them was not a part of your plan okay this was an unexpected event and so they would find it incredibly hard to reallocate that energy which was supposed to be allocated to going um, out to the party and then giving you that energy right because they have to because they're affiliative uh, they're people oriented unlike entjs and estjs so uh, so yeah they would be super pissed that this unexpected event uh just kind of popped up and they have to you know bring that energy out uh and it's 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 frustrating for them but if you were an ENTJ or an ESTJ you would understand that this this thing this unexpected event was bound to happen and they're going to work around this obstacle and they find it easier to kind of divert their energy from uh, plan A to plan B to plan C to plan D because that's that's just life and if you're not prepared for chaos then you're living in a bubble um, ISFJ and UISTJ. All right, that's a wrap. And um, if you found this content useful to you, please subscribe to this channel and like this video. Drop me a comment here or drop me an email. Uh, the details are available in the about section um, of this channel. Until then, don't get complacent. Love you. Love me. Love Mademoiselle. Venus.